Hey, it's Mr. Lineski with Unit 6, uh, Section 2. We are looking at similar polygons. Uh, so let's get started. So we talked a little bit about ratios and proportions uh, last section. So now we're going to kind of look at something that's called scale. Um, scale is a ratio that describes how the dimensions typically in a drawing or figure are related to their actual dimensions. Um, the scale is usually expressed per one unit. Um, sometimes decimals are appropriate. Sometimes, for the most part, we kind of just leave them as whole numbers. Um, so here's an example. It says the length of a key in a scale drawing is 7 centimeters. So that's in the drawing, the scale drawing. Uh, and it says that the length of the key is 4 centimeters. So this is the actual length. Uh, and then they want to know what is the scale of the drawing. So essentially all we are doing is we are comparing the drawing to the actual key. So when we compare the drawing to the actual key, we could say it's 7 over 4. Realistically, we can kind of just leave it as this. So this is known as the scale, um, or sometimes we refer to it as the scale factor. Uh, moving on, talking about similar polygons. So this is something that we're going to discuss in the next section as well, but we're breaking up this unit into two parts. So part one actually ends at this um, section here. So similar polygons. Polygon is basically just a shape um, with multiple sides. So if we say that two polygons are similar, what we're saying is that the corresponding angles are congruent. Remember, congruent means that they're the same or that they're equal. And then we're going to say that the corresponding sides are proportionate. So we talked about um, congruent triangles. And that was when we said, oh, the triangles are congruent. It meant they, they are exactly the same. Well, now we're not saying that these figures are the same anymore. We're saying that they're similar to each other. So given in this example here that ABC is similar to EFGH, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these figures and we're going to list all the pairs of congruent angles. So just like we did with um, congruency, we can still stack. I refer to it as stack them. We can stack this on top of this to kind of see what matches up with what. So we can say that angle A is going to be congruent to angle E. We can say angle B is congruent um, to angle F. We can say C is congruent to G. And we can say D is congruent to angle H. And if you take a look at the figure, so what I've done here is I can pull the little mini figure around. So notice, the side lengths are not the same. They're clearly different, but I can still match the angles up. I can say, you know, here's E and A. And then when I pull it down here, you know, you get D and H. And when I push it over here, G and C are still the same, and uh, F and B are still the same. But notice, the side lengths clearly are not the same. Put that back. So the idea is the the angles are the same, but the sides are not. So what do we say about the sides? Well, the sides are going to be proportionate. So we're going to write something called a statement of proportionality. Um, basically, we're just aligning, kind of like we did with uh, congruency, we match the sides. So we're going to say AB, oh wait, I'm sorry, we don't put a line there. We would say that AB is to EF, and set up our proportion, as um, BC is to FG, as CD is to GH, as DA is to HE. So essentially we're just saying that the sides are in proportion with each other. So AB would be proportionate to EF, and that same proportion would match AD to, you know, EH. Um, and so all of these kind of equal the same thing. Um, the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides of those two similar polygons is called the scale factor. Um, and in order for polygons to be similar, all of the sides have to have the same scale factor. So if we say that one side is two times bigger than the other, that means all the sides in the shape have to be two times bigger than the others. Uh, so if we take a look here, it says uh, the two polygons are similar. So we know ahead of time the polygons are similar. And they want us to solve for x and they want us to solve for y. So if we take a look here, we know the two polygons are similar. And if we look, we see we have two numbers here. So we always want to use the two numbers to set up the scale factor. So for this particular problem, my scale factor would be 4 to 6. 
If you wanted to, you could say 6 to 4. That's fine, too. So I'm starting with the smaller shape and going to the bigger shape. So this is my scale factor. So now to solve for x, we're just going to match up the, the corresponding sides here. So I would say 4 is to 6 as 3 is to x. And now I can solve for x here. So just cross multiply just like we had been doing. We get 4x is equal to 18. Divide both sides by 4. We get x is equal to 4.5. Again, decimals are fine. Um, to solve for y, we use that same scale factor. The idea of the scale factor is you can use it for the whole figure. Um, so 6 is to 4 as y plus 1 is to 8. So when I multiply here, uh, 6 times y plus 1, remember we should kind of write it like that, is equal to 4 times 8. 4 times 8 is 32. Uh, when I distribute the 6, I get 6y plus 6 equals 32. Subtract 6 from both sides, I get 6y equals 26. Divide both sides by 6, I get y is equal to 4.33, repeating. So we're going to look now at just a couple examples where we will kind of talk a little bit about scale factor. So given that the two figures are similar, triangle ABC similar to triangle DEF, find the scale factor of uh, triangle ABC to DEF, then find the scale factor of DEF to ABC. The way that this is worded basically just tells you whatever thing comes first, whatever figure is first, start with that. Pick a number from that triangle. So scale factor of ABC, so pick a number in this triangle. Let's pick 4. And now when I compare it, I need to make sure that the side matches. So what side would match with AB? AB matches with DE. So the scale factor would be 4 to 24, which if we simplify that comes out to be 1 sixth. So you may be asking, well, Mr. Lineski, I didn't pick the 4, I picked the 3. Okay, let's look at that. If I pick the 3, I would be comparing it to 18. 3 is to 18, simplifies to 1 6. Well, what if you pick the 5? 5 is to 30, all of that simplifies to 1 6. So we get the same scale factor for the whole figure, and that's kind of the idea. So if I said find the scale factor of DEF to ABC, all that means is that we start with a number on DEF. So I'll start with 24. So 24 is to 4, and so when we simplify that, we get our scale factor. Essentially, it's 6 or 6 to 1. So essentially, when we flip the order, all we do is just the uh, inverse, or I'm sorry, the reciprocal of that number. So we are talking about scale factors and side lengths, and so scale factors also relate to perimeters. If I say that the scale factor of the sides is 4 over 6, that means that the perimeters also use that same scale factor of 4 over 6. So in this figure we have ABCD is similar to RSTUV. Find the scale factor and the perimeter of each shape. Remember, perimeter just means that we are adding all the sides. Um, so here, if we kind of take a look at our figure, nothing really matches directly, but we see our lines of congruency. So that means if this is 4, this is 4. If this is 7, this is 7. And since both of these are sort of marked accordingly, we can use that as our comparison. So our scale factor, I'll abbreviate SF, is going to be 4 over 7. So now the idea is I want to try to find the perimeter of each figure, which means I need to figure out what this side is, so I'll call that x. These are going to be the same thing because they're marked the same. And I would probably need to figure out what this side is here. I'll call that y. So let's solve for x and let's solve for y. Um, so I'm going to say 4 over 7, that's my scale factor, is equal to x over 10.5. So remember, stay consistent with the figure. Start with the small one, go to the big one. Um, when I cross multiply here, that gives me 4. Um, whoops, sorry. 4 times 10.5 is equal to 42. And that's equal to 7x. 
Uh, when I do 42 divided by 7, I get that x is equal to 6. So that means that this is 6, which also means that this is 6. So without actually having to solve for y, because the problem's asking me solve for the perimeter. I don't need to actually solve for that side. So what I can do is I can find the perimeter of this shape and then just put it into the scale factor. So I'm going to add all of these sides together. 4 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 4 is going to equal 26. So the perimeter of the small shape is 26. So let's use the scale factor. Small to big is equal to perimeter of small to perimeter of big. And I'll just call that y. So now I can cross multiply and solve for the perimeter of the big shape. So when I cross multiply here, I get 4y is equal to 100. Whoa, that's a terrible equal sign. Uh, is equal to 182. And then I divide both sides by 4, giving me 45.5. And that would be your perimeter of the big shape. Over here in the next example, we have JKL is similar to EFG. Uh, Find the length of median. Remember, median cuts a line in half. KM. So this is what we're solving for. I'll call it X. We're solving for KM here. Um, so again, this is where we can set up our comparison. We can say 40 is to 48 as 35 is to x. And just like we have been doing, we're going to just cross multiply and solve. So when I cross multiply, I get 40x equals 1680. And then I divide both sides by 40, giving me that x is equal to 42. So the answer to the median length would be 42. Moving on to the last two problems, we have Tammy's making invitations. Determine whether the size of the new invitation is similar to the original invitation used. If so, choose the correct similarity statement and scale factor. Um, so the idea here is we're just we're given the side length, so we just need to see are they proportionate to each other. So I will say 8 is to 16 as 6 is to 12. So there are two ways you can do this. You can actually divide the numbers out and check the decimals, or you can cross multiply. I'm going to cross multiply. 8 times 12 is 96. 6 times 16 is 96. The idea is if we get two of the same number, that they are in fact proportionate. So we can say, yes, they are. However, if I cross multiplied and got two different numbers, that would mean that they do not follow the same scale factor. So the question is asking us, what is the uh, scale factor here? So if I simplify these fractions, the scale factor um, would be 1 over 2. 6 over 12 simplifies to 1 half. Uh, it also wants us to write a similarity statement. So we could say something like B, C, D, E is similar to F, G, H, I. That would be our similarity statement. Um, and then the last problem here, looking at um, triangles again, we want to solve for x, we want to determine the scale factor. Uh, we're told ahead of time that yes, in fact, they are similar, so we don't have to check if they're similar, we know that they are. Um, so remember, that just means pick any two sides and then use that comparison to solve for x. So I'm going to say 9 and 12. Um, so 9 is to 12 as x is to 20, because those sides match up. And then we're just going to cross multiply and solve. So when I cross multiply, I get 12x is equal to 180. <coughs> Divide both sides by 12, I get x is equal to 15. They want to know what the scale factor is. So ideally, again, we're going uh, EDF to NMP. So we are going small to big. So we kind of set that up here. So it's just a matter now of simplifying that fraction, which 9 over 12 simplifies to 3 over 4. All right, that is it for similar polygons. Thank you for watching. I know it, and now you know it.